to you. Chorus is um, MSc student um, at UCT. And um, I'm not going to steal her thunder by telling, um, telling you what she does for, is doing for her project, but it, um, it, it rests critically on, um, on us getting the, um, the bird pick section of the virtual museum up to, um, up to a little bit larger than, um, than what it is. So, Chorus, thanks. Over to you. Um, why is the virtual museum, the bird pick section of the virtual museum so important right now? Thanks, Chorus. Right. Thank you, Liz. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm going to share my screen just now. And can you see my screen? No, yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Yeah. No, not yet. Okay. I'm getting a failed to start message. Okay, let me try one more time. Yeah, I've sent everybody for permission. Yep, there it's going. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit about the virtual museum tonight, um, specifically the bird pick section of the virtual museum. And hopefully this will serve as just an overview of why the data set is important, um, where the data are going to be used, and how you can contribute if you should choose to do so. Um, and really, if nothing else, my main goal for tonight is that you leave the end of this talk with just a conviction that biodiversity is important and that you play a major role in determining its strength. And now I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> so um, let's start with a really big picture question, which is what is biodiversity and why does it matter? And I feel that I may be preaching to the choir here because so many of you are citizen scientists and you've done some amazing things already to conserve the biodiversity around you. But regardless, I think that it's really important that we start here. So several of you may know already that from the multiple emails over the past year that my research focuses on species distribution modeling. Um, I'm essentially using the bird atlas data from the South African Bird Atlas Project and the virtual museum, the bird pick section, to predict where species occur within um, Southern Africa. But tonight I actually don't want to discuss the question of where the birds are so much as why do we care? <laughs> So let's, let's unpack that a little bit. Why do we care where the birds live? And the simple answer is that birds are good indicator species. And what I mean by that is that when birds in an environment are doing poorly or when they're absent altogether, that's generally a really good indication that the environment is also suffering. Um, so if we think of something simple like a red lark, um, associated with those beautiful red dunes in the northwestern part of the Northern Cape, right? So what happens if some of those dunes are um, converted into pasture land for livestock due to agricultural expansion? Well, we could see a few things start to happen. First, we'll probably start to see fewer red larks as the landscape changes. And second, the species composition or the birds that are present in that area will also start to shift. We might gradually start to see more birds that are associated with livestock and agricultural areas also become more common, things like cattle eager maybe. So what are we doing when we look at the decline in a lark population and seeing, and then move out and say, okay, well, what else is changing? We're actually using something called a systems thinking lens that's looking at the disappearance or the dwindling of a lark population not as an isolated event, but saying that that event is telling us something. It's telling us to look at the ecosystem as a whole and ask what other parts or interactions have changed, which might be influencing the decline in red lark numbers. And this is true for many organisms, just depending on the type of ecosystem that you are studying. So in our case, we're looking at the diversity of bird species present because that can tell us a lot about the health of our ecosystems. And generally, the consensus is that the more species and linkages between species you have in an ecosystem, 
the stronger or more resilient that ecosystem will be to change. And we are in a changing world, so that's a reality that we do need to consider. Um, there's a brilliant quote here from Aldo Leopold, which says, to keep every cog and wheel is the first precaution of intelligent tinkering. And that's one of my favorite quotes. He's saying that even if we don't fully understand the relationship between biodiversity and ecosystem stability, we know that the interaction is important and we need to protect ecosystem components in order to ensure that we avoid losing something essential, which could result in an ecosystem collapse. So we care where the birds are <laughs> because um, we need to know a basic understanding of their habitat requirements and knowing where they are can tell us that. And ultimately that um, informs things like policy, um, land use, and even lifestyle choices, how we live day to day. Um, and that helps us protect the health of our ecosystems and promote biodiversity. Um, so how does the virtual museum address these big picture goals? And just as a brief reminder, for those of you who might not be familiar with the virtual museum, um, it's an online database of photographic records and it curates records for multiple taxa. So for um, fungi, scorpions, odonata, lepidopterans, freshwater fish, reptiles, frogs, and of course birds. And I will be focusing primarily on the birds for the remainder of the talk. Um, and many of you also will be familiar with the South African Bird Atlas Project. It's also a citizen science initiative that was found, um, founded on mapping species distributions with a focus on monitoring. Um, and that project has been hugely successful. It's um, achieved amazing coverage across Southern Africa through just millions and millions of records. And some of you may now be wondering, and rightly so, why do we need bird picks then? <laughs> if the Atlas project can already tell us where the birds are located, is bird picks redundant? Well, not quite, um, because bird picks actually occupies a unique niche within the virtual museum. It is a wonderful opportunity for comparison. See, we have a lot of data in the virtual museum for scorpions, for instance, but what we don't have is any way of testing how accurate those data actually are. So we don't have a definitive scorpion atlas to which we can compare virtual museum records and determine whether they actually represent actual species distributions for the scorpions. But with bird picks, we do have a standard that we can compare things against, and that is the Atlas Project. And here we have this amazing opportunity to assess the value of the data that's curated in the virtual museum, which compared to the atlas are basically um, weak data. And weak is not an insult, it just means that um, they're fundamentally simpler than the data that's curated in the, the atlas project because BirdPix data is opportunistic, meaning that there's no systematic or time structured um, protocol for data collection. It's um, only presence records of the species. We don't get any information regarding absence or abundance, meaning how many birds of one species are present, and it's built on a coarse scale. So it works on a quarter degree grid instead of the pentad scale, which is finer, that the Atlas project uses. And none of those are bad things. Um, in fact, the simplicity of bird picks is a big part of its appeal because it makes fewer demands on, on the time and the expertise of contributors. It's open to a wide range of people, so anyone with a camera and some curiosity can contribute, and that, that greatly increases the potential scope or scale of the project. So bird picks is really important because it allows us to answer the question, can we generate strong species distribution maps using sparse opportunistic data? And that question is the focus of my master's research. And if the answer is, then we also have this really exciting opportunity to apply similar methods to modeling distributions for the underrepresented taxa in the virtual museum, like the scorpions and the moths and the lacewings, et cetera, et cetera, which plays a big part in biodiversity conservation, which we talked about at the beginning. So bird picks holds a lot of potential, um, but we do have some work to do um, in order to give the statistics the best chance at creating accurate models. So right now our primary focus with the bird picks data set is um, filling it. We have big holes in certain parts of the country, especially in the Northern Cape, 
But that being said, we have seen some amazing progress in the last year, even. Um, if you take a look at these two maps, the one on the left is from June of 2019, when I first came. And the, the next map on the right side is from um, 2020 of this year. And they're showing you the number of species recorded in each grid cell in the Western Cape for bird picks, um, with lighter colors representing fewer species and darker colors more species. And this is actually an incredible and exciting change, just seeing how much of the Western Cape is turning orange, <laughs> even within a year, and coming closer to um, approaching, well, it's approaching being filled in, actually. Um, and at the moment, we are obviously a bit restricted in what we can do. Um, in the past, one of the primary limitations on getting strong coverage has been um, limited access, whether in remote areas or areas with few roads or um, on private land or inhospitable terrain. But lockdown has given us the additional challenge of limited mobility. People aren't able to leave their homes as much. Um, and that has also impacted data collection. So we did see a big increase in home submissions or people uploading photos from their houses during lockdown. And there are a couple of great blogs on the BDI website about that, which I would re recommend reading if you haven't already. And the figures I'm going to show now are actually taken from one of those blogs, which um, Liz published early last week. It's called um, Bird Pixing Since the Start of Lockdown, I think. Um, this is the same color scheme as the previous two maps. And this is showing you differences since the start of the lockdown to um, the 22nd of June this month. Same color scheme, but if you look up in the northwestern part of the Western Cape, up here in this arm, you can see there's some substantial differences that have been made um, in that area and that's really encouraging um, because coverage on the eastern part of the country is actually quite a bit stronger than the western part so it's nice to see some of these changes happening um, just in the past few weeks even. Um, so given our current limitations and our current situation, what can we do to contribute to bird picks? So I have a set of four simple suggestions, which coincidentally all start with the letter S, so maybe that'll help remember them better. <laughs> I do love a good alliteration. So the first is start where you are, start here. And whether that means um, taking photos at home, like Christelle Wilson is doing in this first photo on the left, or making short day trips to areas around you, or sorting through and uploading old photos, don't feel like you have to travel to a far away or unvisited grid cell to make a difference because every record that you submit is helping the modeling algorithm. So start where you're at. Second S is spread the word. This might be the most important step of all. Please share your enthusiasm and encourage others to contribute to the project. Um, share what it means to you and ultimately the value of the data that you're collecting. Um, and I hope this talk is helping to clarify just how, how meaningful your contributions actually are. Um, third S is stay current. And that just means keep the grid cells up to date. If it's, it's really important for us to regularly revisit grid cells and um, refresh the list of species that are present within the grid cell because some are from old specimen records dating back to the early 1900s. So they're not um, an accurate representation of what species occur in the cell. So it's important to keep them current by coming back. And finally, and this will apply more as the lockdown eases, um, spread out. So do try to the best of your ability to visit those grid cells with little or no coverage because data for those regions is really important and it does make a difference in the accuracy of model predictions. Um, but I realize this is not really an option for most of us at the moment. And as I said before, every record that you contribute is valuable regardless of where it's coming from. So your four S's, um, start where you are, spread the word, stay current and spread out. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. Um, thank you all so much for your contributions up to this point, And I hope to see many, many more from you in the future. Thanks everyone. Right, we've lost our uh, screen, yeah? Um, so we can hear you. Can you still see me? Yes, we can see yeah. you. Okay, right. So um, I, I, I clicked something and uh, lost, the, lost the, the video. So um, so thank you very much, Chorus. Is there, are there questions for Chorus? You're, you're going to have to take over and, uh, 
and direct, see who's got questions and get them to answer. Uh, well, what we can do is just, um, if you want to uh, jump into the chat or, or open the chat window um, and, and ask questions there, um, then it might be easier. Uh, otherwise, uh, if there are not too many questions at once, we can otherwise just, uh, people can just start talking. <laughs> uh, most people are muted though um, for background noise. So if you, uh, if you do want to ask a question, just unmute yourself. Um, oh, we have got a, a question from uh, Peter. He says, is the project only for the Western Cape? Um, good question. No, it is across all of Southern Africa and actually you can submit to and from anywhere within Africa. So um, my project is focusing just on South Africa itself, but you can upload from anywhere within continental Africa. Um, and then Niels has asked, uh, yeah, sure, go for it. Hmm? Liz, you wanted to say something? Yeah, so, so um, the um, bird pick represents for the, for the African bird actors project an amazing way for people who are, are not really skilled at identification. You just take photographs of birds and upload them and let somebody identify them. So from all over Africa, the, um, the Bird Picks project has the potential to make a huge difference to the um, African Bird Atlas project. But that's a topic, I think, for probably another talk at some stage. Niels. Uh, Niels wanted to uh, know how we can see which squares uh, are empty. It sounds like he wants to, to find the empty ones and, and populate them. Um, so we do try to put out kind of up-to-date maps every now and then on the BDI social media sites of which those are empty. Museum, looking at how many grids they are. So, if you know that they're common in a grid cell and no one's uploaded that yet, you can also go and try and get a photo of that species to add to the list. So, it's a good way to, to see what's, what's been recorded and what's been missed. Cool. Um, uh, yeah, there are quite a few more seem to be coming through. Uh, how long uh, for data collection before uh, sort of final analysis and write up? <laughs> Good question. We are kind of in the process of trying to upgrade um, the master's project to a PhD. So we'll see if that goes through or not. Um, but if not, then the final write up would be in September of this year. So that's the goal. <laughs> Cool. Um, and then, uh, is it possible for a citizen science scientist uh, to access the distribution map based on a, on species richness? If yes, uh, what is the process? Mm. So right now, I'm making the maps in R, kind of on an as-needed basis. But I'm happy to share the code for that with anyone who is willing to to have a whack at it. So <laughs> if you're keen, um, I can definitely share that information and it's it's quite straightforward now that we've worked out a lot of the kinks in it so yeah okay cool that yeah. question came from ringham so i think he may be in touch perfect um and then uh, if everyone wants to have a look in the in the chat uh, window uh, megan's popped a couple of links in on uh, uh, how to find the gaps in the virtual museum maps so you can check that out to to find uh, which squares are, are empty and need need some help. All right, right team. I'm That's it, I'm uh,